Hey guys, so I wanted to make a quick video just to show you how to quickly set up Auto Miner for the first time. So the first thing you're going to want to do is download and install the latest Auto Miner from GitHub. So you can go right to this link, which I will put in the description. Download this installer. Once the installer is complete, go ahead and run it. Um, you can install it wherever you want. I like to keep it in the default install path, which is right on the C drive. Okay, so it's been installed. Now we can go onto the C drive and look for the auto miner folder. So next step is you're going to need to edit a few things in the settings.xml, which is located in the config folder. So you can use Notepad or Notepad++ in my case. So once we have that pulled up, the main things that are going to need to be modified is going to be your address. This is your BTC address, typically. Your, MM, your MRR API key, MRR API secret. And then these three are optional if you plan on using nice hash. So we're going to keep it simple and just not set it up to use nice hash currently. So, okay, let's go grab the MRR API key and secret. This is my BTC address, so I don't need to change it. So let's go to our internet browser, log in to Mining Rig Rentals. You'll then click over here on your username, drop down API keys. You will then press add key. You need to give it manage rig permissions. Nothing else is needed. Press save. So here's your key. Copy that. Paste it right here. Here's your secret. Paste that there. Make sure you save. And now we can go ahead and launch Auto Miner. So go back to the main Auto Miner folder and click on the WPF app Auto Miner.exe. Okay, it's launched. So now, the first thing we're going to want to do is download the miners. You can use your own miners, but to keep things simple, let's just use the Manage Miners option. So you're going to want to select the uh, drivers you have, or the CUDA version required based on your drivers. So we're going to go with uh, 9.2. That's currently what I'm using. If you're not sure, you can... Go to your NVIDIA control panel and take a look here. Right now I have 399.24, which falls under 398 plus, which is less than the 415. So there we go. Okay, so check for updates. Okay, updates found. So now we can apply updates. So it's going to download the updates and also add an exception to uh, Defender. That way Defender doesn't flag these miners as viruses, which is pretty typical with miners. So I'll pause this video once the downloads are complete. We'll move on to the next step. Okay, miners have been successfully downloaded. Um, you know, you'll know it's complete once you get this message box. Uh, just to note where the miners get downloaded to, uh, right here in the miner, it creates a miners folder and they all get added in, in right here. So, um, so next thing is we go over to the config tab. So we're not using nice, address, uh, nice hash, so I'm ignoring this. Worker name, make that whatever you want. 
Um, I'll just I'll make this auto miner test. Next thing is profit selection. Um, this is the profit selection for when the miners are algo switching. Uh, this is for me. It's more about getting rented, so I'm less worried about this. Um, so really, current estimate, uh, 24 hour actual is something I usually run as well. Next thing, pricing selection. Um, you know, this is something you can play around with. I typically, if, if rentals are hot, I use average, which takes the average of the lowest MRR price, suggested MRR price, and the last 10 MRR price, and average just those. So usually the average is a little bit higher. So if things are, if I'm getting rented constantly, I might switch to this, hopefully get some more profitable rentals. Otherwise, I'll just use lowest MRR price. Um, you'll then want to set your primary MRR server for me. These two default are what I want. Interval, you can leave this default. It's how frequently it's refreshing. It's looking to see is your rig rented. Um, it's pulling, you know, the latest stats from the, the pools, etc. cetera. Um, also pulling like your wallet balances and things like that. Switch tolerance, this is going to be um, what percentage increase there needs to be for you to switch to a different algo. So, you know, it's not going to switch algos unless there's another algo that's 10% greater in profits than the current algo that's being mined, if that makes sense. Next thing, MRR increase percentage. So this is whatever price is pulled. Like in this case, I'm using lowest MRR price. It's going to add 20%. I recommend we'll leave that at zero. These are settings you're going to want to play with and, and dial in depending on your preferences. I'm setting them to what I like right now. MR, MRR hot increase percentage. Um, I usually go 10% rented percent. Um, this is the percentage of rigs that are rented at M MRR that determines when to use this hot increase percentage. So if you hover over here, rented percentage required for MMR. RR hot increase percentage to be used. So if 20% of the rigs on mining rig rentals is, is rented, it's considered hot currently and it would add 10% to the price. So I like to leave this a little higher. Let's go 50%. Um, so this is critical to me, min BTC per day. This is gonna prevent your rig from being priced too low. Um, the rig I'm currently running is a six by 10 AETI rig. So I like to go 0 0.0015 BTC per day. Um, you know, I have another rig that's 12 by 1070 Ti. That rig I run at 0 0.002 BTC per day. So, you know, that number is up to you. What is the lowest you will accept for a 24 hour rental is this price. Next thing, min hours that you can get rented. Default three is good. Max hours, what's the maximum rental you want to allow? I like to go a week, which is 168 hours. Average samples, uh, this is something I've kind of played around with. Not really sure if it's useful or not. It's essentially going to average the current estimates. So that way it kind of minimizes needless algo switching. Next thing is user currency. This is going to take your the pricing in BTC and calculate it into any of the Coinbase supported currencies. So you could put um, LTC in here, you know, ETH. I like USD. It's easy for me to understand what the pricing looks like. Um, CPU min BTC per day. This is if you're using CPUs. Um, we're not going to do that for now. Um, startup mine. This is essentially when auto miner runs. It just starts mining right away. Um, you'll use that if you're going to set auto miner to to run at startup. I use that, we'll leave that off for now. Log hash rate, that will allow it to log the hash rate on these this hash rate graphs tab. Um, use MRR, obviously we want that. Manage pricing, allow auto miner to set pricing on MMR website. If you do not check this, auto miner is not gonna do anything through pricing. 
rented mining only. If you turn this on, your rig will not even mine unless it's rented. So it's when algo switching isn't profitable anymore, turn this on and save energy. Um, these are the currencies you'll accept on MRR. You always have to accept BTC, but you're, it's optional to accept LTC, F, and Dash. Last thing is, is reboot rented. Auto Miner has a rig monitoring feature where if it detects um, six failures, it will perform a reboot. What a failure is, is when one or more GPUs falls below a certain utilization percentage, I believe it's 70% or 75%, I can't remember for sure, but um, it's kind of useful if one of your cards craps out it can reboot your rig and, and everything. But sometimes when you're rented, it's usually a, it can be a renter pool issue and, you know, you'll get into these reboot loops. So this is kind of a way to get around that. Um, but most of the time you don't have issues with that. So I, I do want it to reboot when rented because it's usually, you know, a card crapped out on me and it, it just needs a reboot. Okay, you guys, so now Miners are downloaded. Now what you need to do is enable the rigs you want to, I guess, enable the algos you want to use on mining rig rentals or the algo switch. So we'll keep it simple. Just enable two algos. Um, we'll go X16R, X16S. We're then going to press create rigs, MRR. What this will do is create the rigs. Create rigs on the MMR website when the MRR ID is equal to zero. So we're going to say yes. We're going to wait for a message box saying that it's complete. And there it is. Process complete. Do not forget to save config after verifying. And what I mean by um, the MRR MRR ID equal to zero, this column right here. This is populated with your MRR ID. This is the ID of your rig ID of your rig on the Mining Rig Rentals website. So if you already have a rig on the Mining Rig uh, Rentals website for an algo, you can type it in here rather than creating a rig. So let's just hop on the website and see what was created. So we'll refresh this page. I'm gonna have a ton of rigs on here, but you see this dialog up here. These two rigs were recently created. Auto miner test dash X16R, auto miner test X16S. You'll see these MRR IDs line up. 10 um, or 109600, 109601. So there they are. So you can either just click here to go there, or you can find them on these tabs as well. Um, so that just allows you to quickly create a bunch of rigs on the website. I mean, if you're using 10, 20, or 10, 15 algos, I mean, it's a pain to create them manually. So, okay, rigs are created. Well, now you need the hash rate. There's a few ways to go about it. If you already know your hash rate, manually type it in. Um, you can use the test button, launch the miner, manually punch it in, uh, or you can use the benchmark button. Now, the benchmark button does not work with every um, every miner so keep that in mind I mean it's not a bulletproof benchmarking by any means so um, but we'll keep it simple and I'll punch in roughly what I think my 6x1080 Ti rig gets so entered in um, uh, the other thing is we're gonna want to select what pools we want to use um, these are the pools that we're gonna use when we're not rented I'm going to go ahead and disable everything just to start clean. Uh, let's use, I only want to use Blaze Pool and Z Pool. Now you can say, hey, I only want to use Blaze Pool for X16R and Z Pool for X16S. That's an option. So you can select specific pools for specific algos. Um, one other cool thing is the overclock. You can um, enable this and manually or set overclocks for each algo separately. I turn this on, I can set my core, my memory, and my power limit. 
Um, this will require MSI afterburner. So, but let's keep it simple. We'll leave that turned off. Um, we'll then go ahead and press save. We're now ready to start. So, um, there's a few other tabs. I won't go into really too much detail explaining them, but the coins tab allows you to add coins. You know, maybe you want to mine on a um, supernova with, you know, for Raven coin. Well, you can configure a coin for that. Uh, you're using the um, coin. You're using this API to get the pricing stats for the coins to determine if it's profitable. Um, earnings tab. This will collect your uh, earnings over a uh, one-week period to kind of tr keep track of your balances. We'll clear these stats for now. Rentals. This will show you your active rentals. Hash rate graphs. Your hash rates will get logged here. This will kind of give you a comparison between your actual measured hash rate from the miner versus your expected and then the donate tab. These are donation addresses um, obviously greatly appreciated if you do donate. This is a donation time extension. You can add an additional uh, extension time so the default time is 15 minutes for 24 hours of uh, mining time. Um, so this will just uh, an adder to that number um, but so if you mine for 24 hours, um, you know, your a 15 minute dev fee will be due. Um, if you get rented, you're rented for, for, yeah, 48 hours. By the time you're done running, you're going to owe 30 minutes of dev fee. Um, I mean, it's, in my opinion, a very fair way to go about it. I mean, I don't want to interrupt rentals by trying to kick in dev fees in the middle of a rental. So. But anyhow, we're ready to go. We press start. Starting mining. Um, like I said, dev fee session is going to kick off. I'm going to pause the video, wait for the dev fee session to finish, and show you kind of what else happens. Okay, so dev fee completed. Um, then auto miner goes ahead and, and checks the to make sure you have the latest ports required for mining rig rentals. It then will update your pool. Um, set your pricing and essentially it'll mine on the most profitable algorithm um, in this case it was blaze pool um, and then let's say you get rented on um, for x16s it'll stop mining x16r jump over to x16s your rigs get disabled your x16r rig gets disabled and you know you'll mine until the rental is complete once the round is complete, it'll kick back on, enable all rigs, and and mine the most profitable algo. So that's essentially how it works. Um, you know, I, I disabled mining; it interferes with recording. So, um, but I have some other rigs. There another rig we can look at. I mean, you can just see um, Auto Miner Two. Right now, it's available. Um, you know, it's available on all the algos that I have set up, C11, you know, HMQ. So that's how it works. Um, in my opinion, it's definitely probably the most profitable, at least for me, um, compared to like algo switching standalone. So there you have it.